Okay. You want to tell me all uh, from yeah. from yeah. when yeah. you discovered she existed, yeah. all the way to when you were married. Okay. I was flying. Uh, we were bringing back B twenty nine, the ones that had uh, been in the war. World War Two. Uh, World War Two. Yeah. Uh, the crews of them had time to get discharged, so the military put them all on air on transport planes and flew them home. Like the C-3s or something, the C, yeah. 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 And the planes were left over there. Mm -hmm. Well, they can't leave the planes over there, so they... Over got, there, were you talking about the Pacific Theater? The Pacific, okay. Yeah, yeah, B-29s and B-50 only uh, They were never in Europe? No. Okay. No, yeah. And, Learning uh, history while we're at it. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, uh, I didn't have enough time to get out, so I'm still in duty. Like you know, and they uh, shipped us. I told you about them uh, saying, "Get out of here and don't come back." That was in September. Like that, we came back for ten. That was down in New Mexico. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, and we got back in uh, after at the end of the ten days, and of course we were piddling around doing. Uh, doing nothing, uh, and uh, in in everybody's hair, so uh, must have been uh, about the fifteenth of January or somewhere before that, just before that, we got a, a message from uh, up upstairs saying we need crews to go over and bring back the planes. You have to go all the way to Guam and those places like that and bring the planes back. And this is January of 46. This is January, yeah, 46. Uh, yes, 46. And we want only volunteers. And we, only, we want people that have uh, low getting out time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, they, if you're going to get out in 30 days, don't even apply. Sure. Like, that. So we had time. We had lots of time. We didn't know how, how long we were going to be in. Like, uh, so we all volunteered. Oh, 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 oh. We got shipped. Yes, we got shipped from uh, uh, because uh, Clovis was an excess, and they were trying to. Get, uh, close it all down and all like that. So they shipped us up to Grand Island, Nebraska. Oh, yeah. And uh, I don't know why Grand Island, Nebraska wasn't... Uh, of course, it was closer to where the airplanes were being made. They were just, mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That might have had something to do with it. I don't, I don't know anything about it, but we got shipped up uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, Grand Island, Nebraska about the 15th of January or thereabouts. And we got in Grand Island and they called, put us all in a, uh, in a big auditorium and said, you, they just pointed the finger and said, you are the cooks, you are the cleaning crew, <laughs> you are the maintenance crew here. If you want to eat, you will volunteer to be on the cook line because you are the ones that are here. We don't have anybody else like that. So we went to work doing sergeants and uh, staff sergeants and all the rest of them, cleaning restrooms and, and uh, huh. they're called latrines, called <laughs> trains and cooking and all like that. We were doing all that. And the snow was this deep. Oh. We had to shovel between barracks. Uh, we were on the uh, board sidewalk, mm -hmm. and we had to shovel from one barracks to the next because the snow was, was wow. that deep. And uh, uh, we had been there about 10 days. And they said, everybody up to the auditorium. That was just order. Everybody to the auditorium. So they took us into the auditorium and said, uh, they need volunteer crews to bring, uh, well, I just told you about that. Mm -hmm. That happened at that time up in Grand Island, Nebraska. Okay. I'll, I'll get to the thing that's time and straight now. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we all just volunteered. Everybody that was there was a volunteer. 
was a forced there because they didn't have any place else to put us, and we were so we volunteered. Well, Major Preston was made the head officer of the whole 347, 374, like that, of us, like you know. Well, Major Preston happened to be my crew chief, okay. or my my pilot. Pilot. Mm -hmm. okay. Anyway. So that put us on, uh, uh, put me and them on number one list like that, and we don't. We only had to do what Major Preston allowed us to do, mm -hmm. and and he didn't allow us to do anything. Stay away from everything. Like <laughs> so anyway, we went out to uh, Hamilton, uh, 15th of February. We shipped out of uh, Grand Island, Nebraska, and it was. 20 below zero and snow to here, and we uh, shipped to uh, Grant to uh, Hamilton Field, just out of uh, Napa, Napa Valley in California, and it was this kind of weather right here, just like we are here. In shirt, in t-shirts, we played softball. In February. In February, <laughs> on the 22nd of February when, when we got there. Wow. And uh, so it took them a couple of days to get us together, and they shipped us down to Pittsburgh, California, and aboard a ship, aboard a, a boat. It was an old Liberty ship that they had poured concrete in the center of it to give it ballast. Ballast, mm -hmm. yeah. And they put 347, 374 of us, and the. Uh, Hawaiian, the most decorated Hawaiian crew uh, in, the, in World War II, the, their 400 people and our 300 and some odd people were aboard that boat. It took us four and a half days to get to Hawaii. And uh, we got to Hawaii, and uh, Major Preston and the officer and our crew said, we don't want to go home. We're going to look for the girls around here. <laughs> so uh, the first, uh, all, all of uh, March, we didn't have a crew. But the other crews said, why don't they have, we're going to tell the upstairs about mm -hmm. them. So Major Preston said, well, we do have to fly a plane. Okay? You're going to have to do something at some point. <laughs> yeah. So we came back. We we uh, picked up a plane and came, and came back to Travis Air Force Base, and the where's crew, Travis? At, uh, Forty miles out of San Francisco, okay. uh, uh, Fairfield, Susun, mm -hmm. Fairfield, the cities like that, Fairfield, Susun. Okay. And Travis Air Force uh, Travis Base is there, and the officer said, "Now that we are home, we have to go see our wives." And so they said, uh, uh, my crew member, uh, my officer said, just stick around. And he said, uh, just check in every day to let them know that you're here mm -hmm. uh, so they won't be in the AWOL business like that. So I checked in with them in the morning and stuck up my thumb and headed for San Francisco. <laughs> just every day. Every, every day down San Francisco and back like you know, and I just toured San Francisco like this. But on Saturday night there was Youth for Christ at the First Baptist Church in in San Francisco, mm -hmm. and uh, since it was Youth for Christ, I decided I wanted to go to it. And uh, we had San Franc I had Youth for Christ in uh, Denver, and. Uh, where else do we have Youth for Christ? Oh, and in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, Youth for Christ. So anyway, I decided. So you'd grown up in a Christian home, but not with Youth for Christ in Louisville, in I'm Fern not, Creek. No, no, okay. Not a Christian home. Not a Southern Baptist home. There's a difference. Yes, there is. But Southern your folks were saved. Southern. Oh yes. 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 Okay. Yes. My okay. father was was a missionary. Right. Was a Baptist missionary. Right. But 
when I'm being I'm being snotty when I told you that. Yeah, you are. We were we were not Christian. We were Baptist. Well, yes. Okay. Yes. But what I mean is that's why right. you pursued Youth for Christ. It was because it was in you already. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. 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 I'm just trying to make things clear oh, oh, for oh, oh, posterity. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he's a mess. <laughs> so anyway, it was Youth for Christ on Saturday night. And it started at Embarcadero. That's down mm -hmm. on, uh, uh, where the ships come in. Down uh, by the docks, uh, the port. Yes, okay. Okay. Then uh, started the Embarcadero with the uh, with the Salvation Army. Uh, now they had a uh, they had a citadel. The Citadel Salvation Army Citadel was located there in San Francisco uh, area, like that. So this big band, sixty members of the band or thereabouts, like that. Everybody playing an instrument and all like that, and. Uh, there, and you were just free to join in, just just mm -hmm. free to join in, uh, and of course all these military, navy, and air force, and and everybody else were like that. You know, so I got in line like that and we marched right up Market Street from Embarcadero to Twenty First Street, where Southern, where the First Baptist Church was, mm -hmm. right up there. Uh, it's almost a mile, like it just. By straight up Market Street, right in the center of Market wow. Street, There's thousands of us, wow. at least a, at least a thousand. In a way, I said thousands. There were at least a thousand. Sure. I was like, no. So we got in there, and uh, and they had uh, Christian speakers, you mm -hmm. know, all the different kinds of Christian speakers like that. And of course, the the emphasis was salvation. Mm -hmm. With youth of life, it's an emphasis with salvation, and we had that for two hours, and then so the so the, the first Baptist church had a, a youth hostel. Sure, it, it wasn't called a hostel then. Right, but if you didn't have a base to go back to, if you didn't want to go back to the base, you could stay here tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay. It'll cost you a nickel for a <laughs> razor and, and, and so forth yeah. like that. If you you know, if you if you want to do that, you know, no no cost otherwise like that. So and it, we just bumped there like we were in the military. Wow. Like that. And uh, got up Sunday morning. Nearly everyone went to the church right there. Uh -huh. like that. And uh, so uh, I met I met Marie because she was the leader of the youth group uh, in uh, in that church. At First Baptist. At First Baptist. She and Ethelyn, she had a, uh, uh, Marie had a, a, a Sunday school class for smaller children. I don't remember exactly. Because at that time she was 24, 23, 24. No, she was 22. She was born in 23? Yeah. And this is 47? Oh, it would be 24. No, can't, that can't be. I got a wrong then. That's okay. I don't know. No, this was 46. Yes. This was 46. So you're right. Okay, I'm sorry. She was 22 turning 23. Yeah. I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. We're good. Yeah, because I was always 20. Almost, yeah. Almost 20. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I turned 20. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, so... Uh, uh, this this happened during the month of April, uh, no, during the month of Happy April. Let's see. Uh, on April the seventh, which happens to be my birthday, I arrived in Hawaii and went down to the uh, uh, the territorial prison and gave my testimony uh, to the prisoners. Hmm. On my birthday. On your twentieth birthday. On April seventh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was during. Anyway, it have to have been May. Okay. Because you took that one flight, went back, and then you met her. Yeah. During your. Yeah, I met her, uh, and every every Saturday night we were at Youth for Christ mm -hmm. like that. And she was memorizing Bible verses at the time under the Navigator program, uh -huh. and I was already 
in the Navigator program, and I've been memorizing verses for since I was in Denver mm -hmm. uh, a year a year earlier. I can't know. Uh, anyway, it was uh, I, I, I want a me too kind of thing, and in, uh, in uh, a bunch of us just had a youth get together at the church, and we testified to each other and, uh -huh. and uh, like this and some of the guys were married and uh, and like it no anyway we we just fellowshiped like that mm -hmm. and I just knew her as the leader right of that, one of, of the people group. one of the that, youth that's all it was she was the leader and I knew that she had a sister but her sister didn't always come there because uh, after after we got married, I found out that she and Henry ah. were dating okay. like that, and seriously dating, and uh, and doing time over Mabel's house. Mm -hmm. See, uh, actually, actually, Mabel and Lucius both like that. But he was he was atheist. Henry was. Oh no. Lucius uh, was. Lucius, oh yes. Oh yes. He oh. was anti-church. Yeah, yeah. What about Mabel? She was. A Baptist, uh, a believer, uh, a pianist for a Baptist church when oh, they got right. married. Oh, yeah. that's tragic. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, I just knew her that way. So we went to, uh, uh, went back to at the uh, first of April. First of April, I went back to Hawaii so our <clears throat> so this is your second trip to Hawaii uh, that's, that's what I'm trying to straighten things out that's fine because I know we didn't we spent we just spent all of our time down on Waikiki Beach and, and, and looking around like this for that month when we didn't have to fly mm -hmm. but when Major Preston notified us that we had to fly because he wanted to keep his record straight, yeah. like, you know, like that. So we came back. We went back and went right straight back. Oh, okay. And then we came back the second time, I guess it was. Anyway, the officer said, we're going to see our wives. Sure. I will. You just check in every day and make sure that. Mm -hmm. And so I had the whole month. And that's when you met Marie going down for yeah, Saturday yeah, nights. Yeah, 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 yeah. Back and forth every like you know. I, I just knew her as like this, you know. And uh, so uh, it came. Uh, it would have to be the month of May that we we, uh, we did that. So I went back to Hawaii and to get another plane and. We didn't have to uh, come back again, so I think I spent a couple weeks over there again, and then we. Mm. Anyway, we bought four. We brought four planes back all together mm -hmm. in six months, and when we were in Hawaii in June, they called us in to make a, a report, uh, one of our report times, and Major Preston said, you're out of it. The program has dropped in the end. You are, you're free to go home any way you can get home. You're wow. Free, you're free to go home. But from Hawaii. From Hawaii, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's convenient. <laughs> so, and so he said, uh, you don't have to report to anybody until you get yourself home. So I went over to the air base and I said, uh, I need a trip home. And they said, well, we had a B-29 came in and the, uh, some one of the crew members uh, had, an had needs an appendectomy. Oh. So he's in the hospital here and you can take his place. And I said, fine. So I got aboard the plane. We flew into, into uh, uh, Travis Air Force Base and I said, well, what am I going to do? And they said, well, we're going to take this plane down to uh, Tinkerfield, Oklahoma. I said, yeah. I said, can I go? And they said, yep. 
So we took it down to Oklahoma City, got down there, and I said, no, nah, I got to go to Grand Island, Nebraska. How am I going to Well, we got a, a cargo plane going up to, <laughs> um, to uh, Sioux Falls, not Sioux Falls, uh, what's the other fall? Uh, Sioux Falls, yeah, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, yeah, that, that's uh -huh. what it was, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And I checked, and it's only 90 miles from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, to Grand Isle, Nebraska. So when I got there, at Sioux Falls, I just got me a Greyhound bus ticket, and knew the government would pay for it. Sure. And, and I got on there, and came into uh, uh, Grand Isle, Nebraska on July the 3rd. Again? <laughs> no, this, this is the year before. Yeah. Or a couple years before. Yeah. yeah. July 3rd of 46 still. Yeah. And uh, they said, uh, we've always closed down the quartermaster, so there's some mattresses on the bed over there. That's what you got. And we said, hmm? but it's too cold. We don't have any uh, blankets. They said, we don't have any blankets to give you because the <laughs> quartermaster shut down. So the night of July the, uh, uh, 3rd, I slept between two military blankets, uh, <laughs> mattresses. Two mattresses. The mattress was just about that thick, <laughs> and one under me and one on top of me in my uniform because it was too cold. We you were said coming it was out. July? Of, we were coming out of Hawaii. Oh, we okay. Were out of you were Hawaii. acclimated to the Pacific. <laughs> now you know how cold the weather gets here in North Dakota. It's cold. It really gets cold like that. We'll believe you. Yeah. So anyway, slept that way, went in and reported uh, to the officer, and they said, uh, okay, and they gave me a ticket, a Greyhound, uh, not a Greyhound, uh, a train ticket from... Uh, uh, Grand Island? From, from Grand Island, Nebraska, to uh, Fort George G. Meade, Maryland, because that's the closest discharge center to my home in Louisville, Louisville. Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So I went on a train across to uh, Grant to uh, Fort George E. Maryland. Well, in 1942, I was in that area with the signal, uh, the Army Signal Corps. I was doing secret work uh, with them. I had been in radio school. At 16? Uh -huh. Yes. Well, at 16, I was out of favor at the high school, and I told the history teacher, I, I don't know what kind of nasty tool. I didn't use any curse words because I was. Good for you. Yeah, you know, anyway, but I told her she, she could do whatever she wanted, and I picked up my books and walked out of the history class and went down to the office and put them down in the principal's office, and I said, I'm out of here. That's it. And it was just before graduation, uh, not, not graduation, well, I was... Uh, but the end of the year. I was, soft, I was only a sophomore. Yeah, I ended school like that. Walked out of there, I could know, and I knew I could get me a farm job. I was in the yeah. farm country, and I knew I could get me some kind of a job. And uh, anyway, so I was home and don't know exactly what, uh, all, all that went on, but I found in the paper an ad saying that we need people to learn to do radio work for the government. And they have to be uh, too young to be to drafted surf. or 4F if they're mm -hmm. above. Uh, okay. I went down and applied for it. They signed me up like that and I went to school, started school right then and there. And I was learning radio, learning electricity and, and radio. Yeah. We got transferred, uh, we graduated from that and went on to to Lexington, Kentucky, to mm -hmm. the second to a higher class right there. And we were almost finished with the class, and they came in and said, the school is all over with you. That's the end of it. <laughs> but if you're really interested, we have a place for you in Washington, D.C., where they're doing this kind of work. Mm -hmm. 
So, hey, I got nothing to go to back right. home, like you know, and this is paying me. You 90, burned that bridge. <laughs> this, this is paying me ninety dollars a month. You no, know, that was big real money. money. Oh, that was big money for yeah, a sixteen-year-old. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, and at that time of the uh, of the yeah. world, you know, so so I get on train, went to Arlington, Virginia, where the uh, yeah went to. Uh, went uh, and got uh, got in there and and uh, I lived at 913 Frederick uh, Frederick Lane in Arlington, Virginia, Boston section of Arlington, Virginia, with the uh, Wil Wilkerson's. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Wilkerson said they had room for two boys, hmm. and so uh, two of us got together and we stay, stayed there. And I worked there. That was uh, January, January about January 9th, somewhere right, right around there. And I worked there until August 15th, with 250 people. Most of them were uh, older people, you know, real old, 45 and 50 years old. Past age. service age. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh, yeah. Okay. And. I had there were five women there that took me under their wing, and and Mrs. Day uh, wrote my mother regularly that uh, <laughs> how good I was and how nice it was <laughs> to have a nice kid like this and all all like that. No, so anyway, had the wool pulled over her eyes, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, what's that got to do with my? Other time back here. Well, because now in 47, 46, you've gone back to Virginia, and that's where you're going to get discharged. Uh, back to, yeah. For, uh, yeah, okay, that's right. Because you had already been I, at George Lee once. Uh, yeah, Fort George Lee Meade. Yes. Yeah, okay. So Fort George Lee Meade was just about 30 miles from where I was, where the Wilkerson's lived. Okay. You know? So I thought, I don't have to apply, uh, I got my military money and I'm out of the uh, so I'm going to spend a little time, go back down to Boston and see if I can meet uh, with the kids that I was in. Mm -hmm. well, like, you know. So I went down there and there wasn't anything. So I think probably I stayed one day, mm -hmm. got on my train and went to Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, then, of course, I uh, graduated from high school and uh, got in the Air Force and all this other stuff like that. So anyway, the, uh, no, I, I, I mixed things up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. high school was before yeah. you, sir. Yeah, I went home and, uh, went home and it was uh, July, I got discharged July the 16th in 46 and July 21st in 52. Hmm. Yeah, okay, yeah. Anyway, July 16th, I got home. Uh, I mean, I got discharged in Boise, in, uh, in Fort George, Fort George Meade, Meade, and got, went home to Louisville. And it was college time. So I had uh, heard, uh, oh, my pastor, when I went, when I, uh, enlisted in 46 and in 44 my pastor was Thomas V Wells and he had graduated from Carson Newman College and he just thought it was seventh heaven the right place to go a good Southern Baptist College mm -hmm. so Uncle Sam's going to pay me to go to school and go by any no make any difference where I want to go, Uncle Sam's gonna pay the whole deal. <laughs> so I kissed my mother goodbye with the suitcase and went down to to Jefferson City, uh, t uh, Tennessee, and applied for college and they took me right in. Just as big as all get out. Well, I gotta have some place to live. Well, we have this home and this home and this home and this home. So I found a lady that was just two blocks away from the college, and she had 
a bedroom and uh, so I went in. Now come on, you're not going to give me her full name and address? <laughs> I had to, I don't I don't remember. I missed. I can't believe he doesn't remember I have, I something. Have to interrupt. I remember. She's where, got a question for us. I remember where Marie was living, 419 Cherry Street, Fort Worth, Texas. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's what? see what your wife wants to say. What do you want to say? He he. You're in San Francisco at the youth group. Yeah. And Marie's there teaching class. Yeah. Her question was, how did you and Marie get together? I, I'm getting We're that getting way. there. They're at Carson Newman. At, at least that, he's I'm finally at Carson that Newman. Way. I'm getting that way. We're, yes, we're but it's all these rabbit holes. It's July now, July or August. It's August. It's August of '46. Yes. You're starting college. On 25th of August. Yeah. Somehow you gotta get married in the next five months. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you better get moving. Uh, yeah. Gotta get moving. So I start college like this, and. These girls don't, they're, they're silly, they're, they're, They don't interest you? They don't interest me. They, uh, they have to go to church. It's a Baptist school. They have to go to the Baptist church. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're Baptist, they have to go to church anyway. Well, if they're at the school, they, they were uh, accepted on a Christian basis. Sure. Like that. that's, that's the law of the Southern, of the, of the Carson school. Human. Like Where's Carson Newman again? In Jefferson City, Tennessee. Okay. Yeah, that's where Albert was born. Yeah. So anyway, these girls don't interest me at all. They they're silly. They like you know. The only person I really remember is Marie Butler. She was going. Oh, I got to tell you about her. Okay. I told you better. You, yeah, I told <laughs> you that. Uh, Henry, Henry, and uh, Henry and was, was was supposedly a Christian, okay, Presbyterian, and he married Ethelman, and they took off like that. Well, I found out in in learning about Marie, I found out that she was interested in going to the uh, to the seminary because a bunch of the guys that she had met, the military guys that she had met there in Youth for Christ, they were going to, they were, of course, she only dealt with Christian mm -hmm. men, like, mm -hmm. and one of them, several of them, were going to go to uh, Bible Baptist Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas, and they had sold her on the on the idea that she didn't have to go to college first. She goes there and get her. Uh, really? So it was not just postgraduate. She was, she was doing her college, her undergraduate work at this seminary. No, she was doing seminary work. Say, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, but she had not done college. Not in the high school, college. and then a break. She was working or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's yeah. Okay. So anyway, I knew that she was going to go to Fort Worth to te uh, Texas to that seminary. Well, I knew all about the seminary, all like that. So I hear, I, this is the only girl I got in mind, no, only girl. So I wrote to her at the seminary and told her that I was in uh, her youth class, you know, she remembered, I said, if you remember me, mm -hmm. I don't remember what all I've sold her, but anyway, I said, to, at it the It must have been quite a story. At the seminary, <laughs> anyway, I figured they would give her the, if she was, uh, uh, if she was there, they would get her the letter. Well, okay. they got her the letter, and she wrote right back. Mm. So she said, yes, I remember you, and all like that, and, and so we just wrote back and forth, back and forth, and uh, this was uh, September and October. Well, we agreed that at Thanksgiving time, I would come down to Texas and we would get engaged. Yeah. Wow, the entire relationship was August to November by mail. By, by letters. By yeah, letters. By letters. Okay. Thanksgiving weekend, a couple of the guys are going to go to Fort Worth, Texas, to not to that seminary, but to the uh, Southwestern, mm -hmm. Southern Baptist Seminary, mm -hmm. like the big one there. They were going to go down there and register because they were going 
graduate and mm -hmm. like that. And I said, hey, can I, if I pay him away, can I go? I said, yeah, but you have to be there with us and, uh, and you, have to be, you have to be with us. You know? So I said, okay, we'll do that. So I went down to Fort Worth, Texas to meet her and agree to be engaged. Like that. And, uh, and, and picked up the car uh, the, the same day, I uh, picked up the car to come back that I had ridden down in mm -hmm. and come back to that. That was it. So we continued you to... You are one sweet-talking man we, we, to convince we her. To, we continued to talk, <laughs> we continued to talk, we continued to talk about what uh, married life was all about mm -hmm. and, and all that kind of you know. And uh, I went down to uh, Knoxville, Tennessee and bought wedding rings and an engagement ring. I uh, started paying for them uh -huh. and I was going to have them paid for by Christmas. And they said, that's all right with us, just as long as we get the money, you know. So on uh, Christmas break, I jumped in the bus and went down to, uh, to Knoxville, Tennessee to get the bus to go to Louisville, to home like that. And I was going to pick up the rings then, you know. I walked in the bus station here, and the bus station bus going to Louisville was right there. From this bus to that bus, no rings. Oh, wow. Never thought about it till I got on the bus to Louisville. Oops. And I said, "What am I going to do?" So when I got to Louisville, I called that jewelry store and told them who I was, and I said, "Will you send the rings to?" Marie Butler at 419 Cherry Street in Fort Worth, Texas. And they said, yes, we will, as soon as we get the money. <laughs> so I sent the, well, oh, in this, in this interim from Thanksgiving till Christmas time, Marie and I had decided that we would get married during the time of Christmas holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, and we would try to get married on January the 1st. Mm -hmm. So I wrote to uh, Albert, uh, Ad, Albert B. Atkinson, Bert Atkinson to me. He and I had been in service together. He was a Baptist minister in college at uh, Abilene, Texas. And I wrote to him and I said, will you perform the wedding for us? And he said, yes, he would. So. I said, that's going to be at Fort Worth, Texas, and all like that. Gave him all the information, and I said, see you there. So I went from Louisville to Fort Worth, Texas on the bus, got down there, and uh, uh, they had a, a, I don't remember what it was, a boys club or YMCA or what it was, but they had a room for me there. This mm -hmm. was December the 31st. I slept overnight at December 31st in that boy's room like that and met uh, her tomorrow at uh, wedding time. <laughs> so none of your families were there or anything? No. No, no big church to do and nothing? Yeah. Well, sure it was a big church. The, the, but I mean, it wasn't a big, huge church wedding no, no. planned for months no, and all that. But they had, they had a... An arch or something. A, a, a small room, yeah, uh, for for things like that. Uh -huh. And so, what church was it? It was uh, the Bible Baptist Church at uh, Abilene. Uh, no, in uh, in uh, Fort Worth. In Texas. Fort Worth. Yeah. But Art, this pastor from Abilene, Bert Atkinson, yeah, came over from Abilene. Yeah, and it was J. Frank Norris's church. I don't know. If oh, you really? Know. I yeah. know the name. He's the one that started the seminary. Okay. See? He was running for president of the Southern Baptist Convention, and they they elected George W. Truett in place of him. Mm. And, and that, he got mad and started the seminary. And he started. He left yeah, their denomination. And he started a new denomination called the Bible Baptist Denomination. Like okay. That. So he had this big uh, church that he also was part of seminary. Um, yeah, yeah. So. She was going to his church there. She was in the choir uh, 
Dr. Hamilton was her choir master. Um, so she was okay with leaving seminary and moving up to Jefferson City. That was all. That was all settled. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now, what do you know your address in Jefferson City when you were married for those ten months and living there or nine yeah, months? Yeah, I was in. I was in the dormitory. I was in the dormitory. I was going to tell you the lady had the, the room, and uh, I had nobody. I had nobody. I couldn't talk to her. The the lady. She wasn't interested in this. 20 year old kid, like you know, at least that was his attitude about her, like that. And uh, it was two blocks away from the college, I couldn't go with any kids up there. So somebody said to me, uh, somebody had quit college uh, who was in the dormitory. There wasn't any room in the dormitory when I. Oh, okay. That's the reason why I got the room down there. I they see. said, but we've got these other rooms all around, like sure. that. So I, okay. So somebody quit the, the college and left their room open like that. So I went up and asked him if I, if I could get in today. And they said yes. So I went down and told the, uh, the lady, I said, uh, I'm out of here. What month is this? This is August. Oh, still in the fall. Oh, uh, no, it may have been the first of September. Okay, but still August. in the fall semester. You only lived with her for a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, at the very most, okay. a couple of weeks. And then moved into the dorm. Yeah, and All right. moved into, into the dorm like that. No. So then in January, when you and Marie came back to Jefferson City, Tennessee. Uh, well, I had already, since we were going to get married, uh, we were going to be married when we got back, I started looking around for a place to live. So just south of the, of the college, about... Well, uh, yeah, not no farther than down to our office, uh -huh. here, wherever it is, like that. Okay. Doctor Johnson, a veterinarian, had a room for married people. Mm -hmm. like that. So I went down, talked to him, and he said, uh, "Okay." I don't know exactly what I had to put down or anything like that, no. But he was a he was a racist. And he wanted to make sure that I understood that I had to pay a poll tax before I could get in his house like that. Poll tax? Yes. Why? You're not black. I, I don't get it. What's he talking about? That's exactly what I'm talking about. That so, okay, so you had to pay the tax before you could live with him. Why? Because that made me white. That made me guaranteed white, like that. Oh, so he wanted to know if you'd be able to vote, and okay, what? Well, I guess racist. I, I, that's Just in case you had a drop of something in there somewhere. Right. Well, goodness, what a mess. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyway, we uh, we got married. Uh, like I told you, we came through Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, yeah, Jackson, Mississippi. I changed buses there and came up to. A, uh, to uh, Jefferson City and uh, walked from the bus station up to Dr. Johnson's house and introduced ourselves, went up, got the house all ready, and, uh, all like you know. That was Did she do school that semester at Carson yes. Newman? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the, uh, Mr. Uh, Sloan was our math teacher, and I, by the time she'd been in class two weeks, come on, fun in baby. Are you ready for ready for me to go? Yes. By the time she'd been in class for two weeks, he said to her, Albert, you need her to get you through this course. <laughs> She's gonna tutor you, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, she yeah she was sharp in math. Mm -hmm. That's was. great. Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. Well, Grandpa, this has been amazing.